Shalom and welcome to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker. The heartbeat bill ushered in more progress and abortion in America in the first six months of 2019 than the previous 50 years. After decades of looking for answers, what we needed was to listen for one. The child in the womb is sending a signal. Each beat of their heart is a sign of life, a cry for help, an SOS we can no longer ignore. To deny their heartbeat is to deny, to deny science. This book provides what the pro-life movement has been missing, a clear path to victory. A monumental cultural shift began with a simple bill to ensure if a heartbeat is detected, the baby is protected. At the time the book was released, heartbeat bills have been introduced in 29 states and passed in nine and still counting. This was written by Janet Folger Porter, the architect of the heartbeat bill. This book will ignite hope, inspire and equip readers to bring the killing to an end, not sometime in the distant future, but right now. It is a revolutionary, refreshing, an entertaining guide for even the most seasoned pro-life activists, providing creative solutions to overcome even the fiercest opposition and obstruction. This is the movement for which we have prayed. Ending abortion, once considered impossible, is now inevitable. Victory is a heartbeat away. Janet Porter is the founder and president of Faith to Action, an organization committed to winning the cultural war for life, liberty, and the family, and the architect of the pro-life heart Bill, heartbeat Bill. She's a former national director of the Center for Reclaiming America, founded by Dr. D. James Kennedy, and a former legislative director of Ohio Right to Life, where she successfully lobbied for the passage of the nation's first ban on partial birth abortion. She hosted a syndicated radio program and, and daily radio commentary in 300 plus markets for nearly 20 years. She's appeared on numerous media outlets, including CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox News, and MSNBC. In addition to her pro-life av advocacy, she produced the documentary, Light Winds, How to Overcome the Criminalization of Christianity, and is the author of five previous books, The Criminalization of Christianity, True to Life, What's a Girl to Do While Waiting for Mr. Right, Truth to Go, and 30 Seconds to Common Sense. To learn more, visit f2a.org. Joining us now is the architect of the Heartbeat Bill and author of A Heartbeat Away, How the Heartbeat Bill Will Pierce the Heart of Roe v. Wade and the Shocking Betrayal No One Saw Coming. We welcome Janet Porter to the program. Janet, it is an honor to meet you and to see the impact that this Heartbeat Bill is having on uh, reversing the worst decision that this country has ever made when it comes Thanks. to the sanctity of life. Thank you, Rabbi. It's uh, it's an honor to be here with you today. Uh, just a, a little uh, 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 update. Uh, since we've written the book, there has been another heartbeat law uh, in the state of Tennessee. Uh, and just last week, I met with legislators. So we may be seeing soon a heartbeat bill in, in Alaska. I uh, met with a legislator who will be introducing it in North Carolina. Uh, worked with legislators uh, who are looking to reintroduce it in the state of Kansas. Uh, we are going to see hearts beating all over the country, and as you pointed out, 29 states have introduced it. We're going to keep hearts beating, and, uh, and, and it's, it's an exciting thing to see because every one of those states have now launched an arrow that is working its way through the courts to deliver the fatal blow to the heart of Roe versus Wade. This is such, <clears throat> such an important issue for those that have a biblical worldview that have been caught up in uh, legalized murder. It's the only thing that we can call it, uh, the taking of a life. Uh, when I first uh, became a media voice, uh, my media voice was based on the words found in this little pocket book that I carry with me called the United States Constitution. And the Bill of Rights. 
And I am entitled with certain inalienable rights by my Creator, among which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Roe v. Wade legislated away life. A fundamental founding principle of this nation that life was an inalienable right granted to me by my Creator that cannot be legislated, cannot be legislated, since it is a foundational grant, a mandate of the Constitution of the United States, life. And that any legislation which allows for the ending of a life is unconstitutional. That's right. You know, all these people who say, oh, I was sworn to uphold the Constitution and the heartbeat bill is unconstitutional, they did not swear to uphold Roe versus Wade. They swore to uphold our U.S. Constitution. And it is Roe versus Wade that is unconstitutional. And it will fall as many other bad decisions have fell, fallen, like, uh, like the Dred Scott decision, for example. Um, look, the, the thing about heartbeat, and this is what breaks through the whole, the whole thing, we want to protect them from when our lives begin at the moment of fertilization. The pro-aborts, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, they want to abort them till birth with our tax dollars. But here's something we can we can all agree on. Wherever you are on the, abor on the abortion issue, we can at least agree that when you have a fellow human being with a beating heart, there is life. And that life should be legally protected. And that's what the Barna poll showed. Rabbi, we asked people in a scientific poll. If a doctor is able to detect the heartbeat of an unborn baby, that baby should be legally protected. And guess what we found? Seven out of 10 in America agree. Now, it's not surprising Republicans agree. Their platform has been pro-life for a long time. 86% of Republicans believe in, and, and agree and support the heartbeat bills. Majority of independents, but here's the shocker. 55% of Democrats believe that if, if that heart, heart is beating, that child should be protected. If a heartbeat is detected, the child should be protected. That's the essence of the heartbeat bills and the laws that are now being passed. And that is what I believe, and, and the reason I dedicated this book to President Trump. He said, as he spoke, as the only president to do so, he spoke at the March for Life. And he said, we will win because we know how to win. And I, and I, I put the inscription of the book, that the heartbeat bill is the way to win. If the president started speaking out on heartbeat, he's gonna start breaking through all of the confusion and get to the heart of the issue. A fellow human being with a detectable heartbeat, and that will reach not only the base that will come out in droves to the polls, but also the independents and even the Democrats. And that's really the message. America wants to keep hearts beating, and that's what the heartbeat bill will do. It'll protect nearly every child who faces abortion today. Let me ask you a um, simple question. First of all, just to let you know that uh, the uh, forward was written by um, former Majority Leader Tom DeLay. He's been a guest on this program, somebody we consider a friend. Good of, friend. Uh, a friend of the program and a friend of what we believe. Uh, <clears throat> when you're in the hospital, uh, they determine the time of death when the heart stops beating. That's right. The de facto standard then is if the heart is still beating, you are alive. Absolutely. So very. We've, ne we've never been to a funeral with somebody with a beating heart. Never. E exactly. So if that is the distinction of the end of life. And it is very clear, a doctor will call the time of death when he finds no heartbeat, flatline. They don't do it based on the brain because the brain continues to function for approximately 10 minutes after the heart stops. It is purely 100% determined on the de determination of is there a heartbeat. If there is a heartbeat, there is life. So the medical science has already declared <clears throat> the definition of life is a heartbeat. 
And you know, that's universal. That's around the world, wherever you go. If there's a heartbeat, there's life. I mean, that's why we check for a pulse. If we found a, someone lying on the ground, the first thing you do is you check for the pulse. Everybody gets it. If there's a heartbeat, there is life. And that's what we're doing with the heartbeat bill. We're simply saying, we're gonna take that universally recognized indicator of life and we're gonna quit ignoring it when it comes to the youngest members of our family. We're gonna pay attention to it just as we would with anyone else in any other, any other place, uh, any, other, any hospital in the world. They will recognize, I mean, those hospital monitors, everybody gets, they're not there for decoration. You know, it's, it's, it's there because they're measuring that universally recognized indicator of life. And that's why we find so many people in America favor this thing. Um, and that's why we're seeing so many states introduce it and pass it. Um, and, and that's why I believe it's, it's something that can bring this country together. I mean, we are so divided. I mean, when we've got Joe Biden, who says now he's no longer a supporter of the Hyde Amendment, he now wants us to pay for abortion on demand until the ninth, until birth. Uh, Kamala Harris, who said she wants to say any bill, like you mentioned that we had passed parental consent and the nation's first ban on partial birth abortion. She wants for the states to ask her permission if they're allowed to, to pass a bill or not. They, she wants to run it by the Justice Department to determine whether we're, not al we're allowed to protect children in our states. It's appalling. You remember when they came out and they showed the videos of the, of the baby parks? Remember in California? And we, the, the, California, Kamala Harris was the one who went after the messenger. She went to shoot the messenger. She didn't go after the people who were violating federal law by marketing baby hearts and kidneys and, and, and very various organs of these babies and selling them on the open market in violation of federal law. No, she went after the people who were filming them to expose it and the journalists. I mean, this is a woman who is as extreme as you can get on abortion. And I'm telling you what, they are steering this country off a cliff and we need to wake people up. This is, this is literally life or death. This election is life or death. And you know, you can say what, whatever you want about the personality of our president, but I'm gonna tell you something. We have never had a better friend of life and of liberty and of Israel than we have in President Trump. And, uh, and you know, maybe this is a little too blatant, but I'm telling you, this, this is really what it comes down to. We've got to, if you want to make America great, again, it's not just making America great, it's keeping America, America. If you want to go the way of Venezuela, then vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. If you want, you want socialism to, you know, to drive people off of, off of, a, of a productive and a, an economic gain as the president has ushered in, then, then that's, that's, the, that's your route, that's the way to go. By the way, when you, you look at history, and people say, you know, is socialism better? Is capitalism better? Let me just point out one thing. When the Berlin Wall came down, uh, nobody, nobody ran to the East. Uh, everybody ran to freedom, and that's really what it's all about. If you want to keep America free, if you don't want these people coming after your, 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 your unborn babies, children with detectable heartbeat, but also coming to your door and, and taking your guns away, they've already announced that's their plan. I mean, this is, this is literally whether we keep America, period, uh, and not just keep America, make America great, it's keeping America, America. Um, so I'm a little revved up about it as we see uh, just the, the lies that are being spewed by, by, the, by the, you know, the, the fake news, uh, by the Democratic Convention. And by the way, we, we actually passed the heartbeat bill in Ohio three times because we had a veto twice by Governor Kasich who last night spoke at the Democratic Convention. This is a repu so-called Republican who vetoed our bill twice. We came within one vote of overriding him, but he's a guy who is not only uh, no longer someone he can call himself pro-life, he can't even call himself a Republican anymore. Where did this all begin for you? Let's go back to the genesis of this, because sure. if, you, if you study the sociological impact of the 47 years since Roe v. Wade was passed and the countless millions of, uh, uh, and, and it's easy to sum up that the leading, ca leading um, cause of preventable death, the number one leading cause of preventable death is abortion. So at the top of the list of causes of death, abortion is at the top of the list. So we have the Cancer Foundation, the Heart Fund, and the Diabetes Association. Those aren't the 
the, the big numbers. The big numbers are abortion. That's right. And we leave those off the charts because that becomes a political issue. But if you take a look at the issues of the day, racism, uh, you take a look at the issues of the day of uh, poverty, homelessness, fatherless homes, the community that has been the greatest, most impacted community by abortion has been the African American community. Mm -hmm. And since Roe v. Wade, uh, what are the numbers? Approximately 20 million black babies have been aborted. Rabbi, that number is accurate, and, and what that means is if you were to take, let's just talk about whether black lives matter or not to the Democratic Party. Uh, if you took every man, woman, and child that was alive in the United States in, in 1960, every one, every single person, every black person alive in the United States in 1960 and killed them all. That is what abortion has done to America. It's killed the population of every man, woman, and child alive in America in 1960. I write about it in my book. We hear a lot about accusations of racism. I had a little test, and one of the questions I asked in the book is this. Guess who said this? We don't want the word to get out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. And here's a question. Who said it? Was it A, Donald Trump? Was it B, Congressman Steve King? Who was, who was railroaded over a, a misquote at the New York Times, or was it C, Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger? Guess what? Margaret Sanger, in her own letter, in her own writing, made it clear the Planned Parenthood plan, as they put all the abortion clinics, the majority of them, in the, the, uh, the poor and, and minority communities, um, she wanted to exterminate the Negro population. That is their goal. And I'm going to tell you something. If you think black lives matter, then you need to, you need to be fighting abortion because that's where more black lives are taken every day. Uh, it is a disproportionate thing. For every, every uh, white person that, that is aborted, there is, there's three more black people who are aborted, and they make up uh, far less of the population. We're looking at the, the biggest assault on the African-American race that there is. They, they, the abortion industry kills more than the Ku Klux Klan could ever dream of in, within a three-day period. It's killed more than, than all of the, the casualties, we, all the casualties of Vietnam. We're looking at the number one assault against black lives. And yet, where are the Black Lives Matter group? Well, they're fighting for Marxism. That's what it is. They're burning, they're burning down buildings. They're burning down statues of, I don't know, people like Abraham Lincoln, who fought against slavery and took a bullet because of it. And we're looking at, at such hypocrisy that it makes your head spin. And yet, where is the media calling out uh, the truth? Uh, it's not to be found. Uh, and I'm, I'm very, very grateful for programs like yours, Rabbi. Well, thank you for that. We, we take a very strong stand in this. Let, let's take a moment to go back in time um, to um, the genesis of uh, what really sparked this in your life and sparked this heartbeat revolution. Uh, you know, there's been a debate for a long time of when does life begin? Does life begin at conception? Does life begin at birth? Does life begin at heartbeat? Or uh, an old Jewish line, does life begins at 55 when the dog dies and the kids leave home? All right? So, you know, the definition of when does life begin? Th this heartbeat bill uh, is probably the only agreed standard that we can go by. Although we have early detection through now home testing of when you test positive, uh, it is later in the pregnancy where a heartbeat can be detected. So there still is a period, a window of time uh, in, in which this heartbeat bill does not cover. But if we're going to you, you don't eat a, a, a sandwich in one bite. You've got to take, uh, you, you usually take your biggest bite first, right? and then you eat the rest of the sandwich. And this is the big bite of the sandwich. If we can get the heartbeat bill 
passed in all, then we can begin to fine tune once people get it in their minds that if a heartbeat can be detected, you cannot abort, that that is, that is life. Uh, then we can begin working on the science and begin to get people to start thinking in a broader scope as we move further past the Roe v. Wade debate and we begin to embrace the heartbeat bill and that becomes the law of the land. Uh, so I know that the ultimate goal is the federal heartbeat bill, that, that the United States of America at Congress level in the joint vote of the House of Representatives and the Senate pass the heartbeat bill as the law of the land. There is no law. Roe v. Wade is not a law. The Supreme Court cannot create law. Therefore, Roe v. Wade is not the law of the land. It has not been legislated. There is no bill that has been signed into Congress in the Federal Register, which is the bill number so-and-so, which is the abortion bill. So this, all this misnomering, all this calling it something it's not, the Supreme Court does not have the power to create law. They only have the power to interpret the, con the Constitution. So the fact that there is no law, okay, and even in the uh, uh, Kavanaugh hearings, ask about it. Uh, the statement was made, well, it's been decided it's the law of the land. It is not the law of the land. That's right. The United States of America does not have a law on the books at the federal level right, legislating the legalization of abortion. We have rabbi was activists out of control judges that stripped legal protection from all 50 states, from children in the womb from all 50 states. What the heartbeat bill does is, is it's an incremental bill, doesn't go all the way we want to go. Uh, by the way, life does begin at conception. It is no longer up for debate. There's not a fetology, embryology book in existence that says that life begins at any moment other than the moment of conception. Right. And, and I've been a part of trying to, to pass things like in the South Dakota and, and the personhood amendments, and we just hadn't gotten there yet. This is an incremental bill. And I said, all right, we can't rescue every child just yet. Let's get as many of them as we can. And so as we've seen these bills introduced in state after state, we've also got a federal bill. And it's it's H.R. 490. It's introduced by Congressman Steve King. And it had more co-sponsors than any pro-life bill in Congress, 174. 44 more votes. We have the votes to pass it in the House of Representatives. And so what are we doing? Well, in the in the, uh, uh, the subtitle that you mentioned, there's a shocking betrayal no one saw coming. We are fighting the establishment. The groups of people who say they're there to protect life. Now, I used to be part of that establishment. I was legislative director for Ohio Right to Life for nearly a decade. Little did I know that the biggest opponent to the strongest, most protective pro-life bill in America that we've ever seen in, in this past in the state of Ohio would be my former employer, Ohio Right to Life. They lobbied against the bill, they testified against the bill, they called for two vetoes, and they celebrated alongside the abortionists when they came, and when the vetoes came. And then, when it was evident that the bill was going to pass, with or without them, they ran to the front of the parade and claimed credit. This is, what, this is what's happening in state after state after state. Let me tell you what's happening in Congress. We also have National Right to Life that's been blocking other establishment groups that are, are saying, no, let's just regulate around the edges. Look, we've been doing this for 47 years. You all want different results? We need to try a different approach. And you know what? The heartbeat bill is new, is different. It's something that can protect. As the pro board came in, they testified. They said, this will outlaw all abortions. And I just sat there saying, you know, I sure hope so. Because of the abortion industry, they're motivated by money. They're, they may not stay open for a fraction of their business. They may close them down, and I hope it does. What we saw in Congress is we rolled in a mobile ultrasound. This ultrasound had a testimony of the youngest to ever testify in Congress, Baby Lincoln. 18-week-old Baby Lincoln was there in the Judiciary Subcommittee, up on the screen for everyone to see. All the protesters, everybody was there. They saw Baby Lincoln. They heard his heartbeat. And, 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 and rather than you know all the disruption that happened, the room was silent. 
if that baby's heartbeat was seen and heard, and what we saw was something else that was very surprising. And it was the protester, someone who had been previously disruptive, was seen wiping tears from both of her eyes. And that's when I realized that the heartbeat of this baby can reach even the hardest of hearts. It will reach America, and it has. And that's the good news, that people get it. It is the most protective bill with the most public support I've ever seen, and I've been this, in this movement more than 40 years. And so I'm, I have such optimism, I have such hope, and I have such encouragement to everyone out there who's been marching and talking and, 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 and holding a sign and protesting. I'm telling you, we are on the brink of victory. And what's it going to take to finish the job? It's going to take putting into office President Trump. He's, he's got to finish the job by appointing these other justices in the Supreme Court. He's filling the federal courts with good judges. It's time that we now do our part. If you want to end abortion, the most important thing you can do right now is register to vote and vote for President Trump. Tell your friends, tell your family, because otherwise we're going to be talking about ending abortion for the rest of our lives. I'd rather be ending abortion and doing it now. That is our opportunity. It is unlike any other time in our history. We've got the chance to finish this, and, and, and this is the moment to do it. I'm always moved by the story <clears throat> of the visitation of Gabriel to Mary, where he tells her that she was beloved among all women, all, all, all women, and mm -hmm. that here she was unmarried and was going to carry a child. That child, not terminated, not aborted, was Jesus. Yeah. Under today's standards of an unwed mother, living in conditions that would be against every social moray that was possibly in existence. Her family would have carted her off to the local Planned Parenthood Center and would have terminated that pregnancy. And under a Biden administration, the people would have had to pay for it, just a little aside. That is the magnitude and the bottom line of this the silence, the division. And I'm going to talk about the body of Christ right now. This is God's definition of murder. The taking of a life, the premeditated taking of a life yes. is God's definition of murder. It is prohibited in the Ten Commandments and it is upheld in the New Testament. So the teachings of Jesus did not permit murder, murder being the pre preplanned, premeditated taking of a life. Abortion is the premeditated taking of a life. We covered on this program twice the Kermit Gosnell story, the horrific story of full-term abortions and the cutting of the spinal cord of newborn babies by the thousands by a doctor named Kermit Gosnell. Just one story that made the news knowing that there are many more Kermit Gosnells out there who believe that legalized murder is okay. I will make this statement. You cannot be a Bible-believing, believing in Jesus, Christian, and support murder. You cannot. That's right. It is just that simple. You are either blaspheming a heretic or you're delusional to believe that the Bible 
that God, the creator of life, gave man the ability to choose the willful taking of a life as being acceptable in the sight of God. And I don't care what denomination you are, if you have a Bible and you believe in the Word of God, then you cannot support premeditated murder, whether you like the candidate or not. You, you know, Rabbi, it reminds me of a time when I testified. It was for a bill uh, that would protect babies from conception. And this legislator was very hostile, and she said, how dare you say that to be a Christian you have to be pro-life? She said, Jesus never said the word abortion. The book of the Bible is a book on tolerance. And I said, well, if you open that book, you'll see, you'll see that thou shalt not kill made the top ten commandments. And what Jesus had to say is, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you read a little further, you'll see in Proverbs 24, 11, we are commanded to, to rescue those that are being carried away to death. In Proverbs 31, 8, we're commanded to be a voice for those appointed to die. It is not an option. It is a commandment. And if you love Jesus, he'll keep his commandments. That's, that's the bottom line. You love Jesus when you do what he says. And that's all the way across the board. And if you are not registered to vote, that is also a, a, a disobedience. That is also a vote to kill children uh, by default because you're not there being that voice for the voiceless. You're not there speaking up for those who cannot. And that's, that's a critical thing. And, and there's still time in many states to go and register to vote. And I'm just, I'm just imploring you, do not let this election go by without registering to vote or we will forever wish we had. We, had, we will... We will uh, uh, have missed the opportunity of our lifetime and the opportunity to protect millions of lives. That's that's really what's what's at stake right now. Millions of lives. You mentioned Kermit Gosnell. Well, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, they, they would they were they're on the side of Kermit Gosnell. Late term abortions, fine with them. In fact, they don't want any laws that restrict abortions, even in the ninth month, even to, that would make us pay for those abortions, selling body parts. Apparently that's okay with Biden's vice presidential pick Kamala Harris because she went after the journalist who exposed it and not the abortionists, the butchers who cut babies into pieces in order to sell their body parts. I wrote about it in the book. It, it's appalling. It is the most stridently, uh, horrendously, grisly ticket there has ever been on the abortion side of things. And we need to stand up and we need to speak up. We need to do it now while there's still time. Amen. We're talking with Janet Porter, the Heart Bill, Heartbeat Bill architect. This is a work that she has begun to take on one of the most entrenched, established since 1973 practices in this country that is barbaric unbiblical, unchristian, unjewish, unhuman to take the life of an unborn child. She's documented this story in a book called A Heartbeat Away, how the heartbeat bill will pierce the heart of Roe v. Wade and the shocking betrayal no one saw coming. There are big money interests that want to keep the abortion business alive. There's Big Pharma that wants to keep the COVID-19 virus alive. There's Big Pharma that wants to see, doesn't want to see cancer eradicated. Uh, I respect my audience all over the world of people of intelligence who can think for themselves and follow the money. At the end of the trail, you'll find those who have profited from the most egregious of actions. Jesus said, whoever harms one of these little ones, it would be better for them to tie a millstone around their neck. These are one of those little ones. And this heartbeat bill, that if a doctor can determine a heartbeat, it is a life and cannot be terminated. 
may be the best piece of legislation to be floated in your state, in the history of your state, since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. God taken out of school, prayer taken out of school, an LGBTQ plus agenda being forced down the throats of every American, but who speaks for the unborn? And Janet Porter does. Well, Rabbi, I appreciate the encouraging words, but I want to tell you that when I started this battle, there were many, many people who said that this was impossible. The establishment said, oh, it can't be done. All we can do is regulate abortion. I'm going to tell you what has become what was once called impossible, as you read at the beginning of, of the program, has now become inevitable. We are going to end abortion if we come out and we vote for Donald Trump, who's going to finish what we began. But, but I want to tell you that all the other giants that are in the land, and I wrote about them in my book, the other giants that come down. Hey, once you've seen a giant fall, there's nobody that's going to tell, nobody can tell you it can't be done. My home state of Ohio is, it has a motto. And the motto of the state is something that Jesus said. And it's, with God, all things are possible. This is not the time to cower in fear in the shadows and get behind your mask and, and, and hide out. This is the time for us to advance the kingdom of God in every arena. You mentioned the schools. We talked about how we break the government monopoly in the schools, how big tech is strangling out our voice in the new public square. All of the things that are right now our threats are giants in the land that we are allowing to occupy. And I say no more. Uh, we have a chance, to, you know, people said to me, you know, what, uh, uh, what do you, what's next? What's coming next? Well, we're going to change the world because we have the God of the impossible and we're going to see more giants fall. That's it. We need to, to, to get that army of, of, of believers. If you actually believe what, what God says, you know, it, 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 actions are what you believe. That's why my group is called Faith to Action because we're turning a people of faith into people of action. Because you want to know something? Everything else is just talk. It's religious rhetoric. And so I believe in the God of the impossible. Really? Then show me what you're, show me something impossible that you're taking on. Show me something they say can't be done that you're willing to do. We want to, we have an obligation to show a watching world that the impossible will bow to the name of Jesus, the name above all names. This is our moment. We are to occupy until he comes. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I have seen the impossible done. I've seen it done more than once. And I'm going to, we're going to see it again. If only, and this is the thing. People say, well, you know, there's a lot of people in church and they're not doing what they need to do. You know what? God is famous for working through remnants. If I were to tell you, there were times in this heartbeat battle that I could count my friends on one hand. Um, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating. I mean, I'm telling you, at least I knew who they were. But there were times when things were so tough and we had to expose what the, what the pro-aborts were doing and the rhinos, the Republicans in name only, that were, talked a good game about being pro-life, but blocked the very bill to do that. And so we ran against them. I, I actually ran against the president of the Ohio Senate. Uh, that wasn't very welcome. They spent over a million dollars slandering me in every newspaper ad, every, every, uh, every uh, mailer, every radio and television station. You know what? We made them pay, though. We, it cost them. And so even though we had very few of the remnant that saw this through to the finish line, I'm telling you, if we can do it in a purple state like Ohio, you can do it where you live. Even if you live in New York, even if you live in California, let me tell you, it's worth doing. Because just the information about this baby's heartbeat, let me tell you, Rabbi, before we ever got the bill out of committee, we showed that baby there on the, on the screen, in the committee, the youngest to ever testify. In Ohio, we brought in a nine-week-old baby little baby Haley, and it was like putting a billboard across the state, abortion stops a beating heart, which we've been saying for years. The pro-aborts have been lying and pretending that it doesn't exist. Well, they, they, they had to admit it because they were fighting the bill that would stop it. But instead, with this bill, instead of abortion stopping a beating heart, a beating heart will stop abortion. And so one of the, one of the staffers of the, of the Ohio State House was asked by her friend, she called herself pro-quote choice, she, she asked by her friend to go drive her to the abortion clinic, and she said, no, I can't do it, because I saw that this baby has a beating heart. And months later, she came up to me and hugged me and, and showed me a little picture of a little boy named Aiden. She says she canceled the appointment, the baby was born, what was once her biggest problem, viewed as her biggest problem, is now her greatest joy. And that's the message of life. 
that if we will band together and give solutions to women that they and their children can live with, that's what the pro-life movement is doing. We offer them a, a choice that they and their children can live with, unlike the Biden-Harris ticket that wants to give you, give you a, a taxpayer check and go down and dismember your child and then make more money when they cut it apart and sell it for, for spare parts, as Kamala Harris worked to do in, in, in the state of California by, by, by going after the messenger, going after the journalist, instead of those who were breaking the federal law by selling baby parts. I mean, this, by the way, they say it's a blob until it comes out a baby one day, then wh why is it they're selling the kidneys and selling this baby's heart and selling this, these baby's eyes? And it, it's, it's appalling. It is, honestly, it's, it, it is, it is worse than anything historically that I'm aware of. It is it is um, more grisly than it's, it is the Kermit Gosnell. It is a serial killer, but it's being done at, with with the approval of people who are running for our highest office, and that needs to stop. And the only way that stops is if if people of faith will rise up and become people of action. If we will put our faith to action and start voting these people out, and say no, not on my watch. We we say no to to abortion on demand for nine months with taxpayer dollars. We say no to uh, uh, shredding the Second Amendment and, and ripping apart our liberties. No, we say no to Marxism and socialism. We're not going to do it. And, and, and that's what it comes down to. The choice we're facing right now is life or death, America or, or Venezuela. Where, where do you want to live? And, and, and that's going to be determined by we the people. That's, that's the, the, the beauty of our founding fathers and that constitution that you carry around, Rabbi. They've given us this freedom to govern, and, and we better use it. We had better use it. Janet, you have as a resource for anybody who wants to advance this cause in their state, uh, your Faith to Action organization will work with them to, dra right. to draft the bill. To We've suit, got a model bill. To, uh, so you, ha you have a, uh, a, a model bill. Uh, you have uh, the game plan as to how to get it into committee. Uh, that's what this book is. Yes. And so this book should be in the hands of anyone who is wanting to take an active role in seeing their state adopt the heartbeat bill. Simple. Even if, if your state maybe has already passed the heartbeat bill, or maybe life isn't the issue that's your number one priority, this will this will inspire you on the how to do the impossible. Someone uh, emailed me yesterday, the other day, and said uh, it reads like a novel. It's a story, but in this story is how you can look to the giant and take him down. Uh, I, I'm I'm sick of marching about abortion. I'm sick of talking about it. I'm sick of doing everything like we have what they say we have to do. We can do what they say can't be done. You want to take on the impossible? Well, you, there's some lessons that we learned in the process by going against the establishment, by, by having to face not one but two vetoes by a governor and having to pass the bill three times. But there's things we've learned. And uh, rather than have you go through the lessons we've learned, go in there knowing what it is you're facing. If this is the bill that you're going to pass in your state, this will tell you how. We'll also be here, as you said, uh, to help you. I'll go come and testify. As I told many of these legislators, uh, we'll come and, and we'll help you any way we can. Uh, how, how you set up the committees, who you bring in to testify. Like I tell them, the most important, bring in that mobile ultrasound. Let that baby's heart beat. Let that baby speak for themselves. That heartbeat is is absolutely life changing. It's heart changing. When they went after me and said, "Oh, Janet, her gimmicks and her stunts," I said, "Isn't it sad that to, in order to defend your position, you've got to deny science? You've got to run from technology." You know, a lot of times we get those accusations, but it's the pro-aborts who are running from science, are denying science. Uh, to to as, as as it said in the in the back of the book that, that to ignore it is to to uh, to ignore the heartbeat. Uh, is it's is to deny to, to to deny it is to deny science to ignore it is heartless and that's what else this this bill does it shows that those who oppose the protection of babies in the womb are that we're talking specifically not about a glob that's you can't this is a fellow human being with a beating heart and if you are not willing to protect a fellow human being whose heartbeat can be detected it shows just how cold and heartless you really are and that's where we are with the Biden-Harris Biden ticket. And, and it's, it's one guy 
that's standing up and as and the dedication I wrote, he said, he said, they are coming after me because I am fighting for you, and we are fighting for those who have no voice. That is what President Trump is doing. That's why I dedicated my Heartbeat Away book to him, uh, and uh, I'm told there's someone's going to put it in his hands this week. I hope so, because if he speaks out uh, to keep hearts beating. I think he's going to reach not only the 86% of Republicans who want to see this become law, but also the majority of independents and Democrats who want to keep hearts beating, who believe if a heart beats detected, the baby should be protected. It is an incremental bill, but it's the biggest increment. It's the biggest, closest step that will get us to our goal of conception. Instead of being miles away, we will now be inches away from our final goal. And when we pass heartbeat bills, we're going to go back and we're going to get the rest. We're going to get every other child. And by the way, as technology increases, we're going to save more and more just because technology gets better. We can hear that bar heartbeat earlier and earlier. Right now, it's about six, seven, eight weeks. Um, well, when technology gets even better, we may uh, be able to uh, to protect them all. Because as you know, that heart is beating between 18 and 21 days. Right. Uh, that's before yeah. the mother knows she's pregnant. You know, we see so many reports of neonatologists that have these miracle births at 13 weeks, 16 weeks, 19 weeks, and the baby survives. It, 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 it's if you've been to a neonatology unit, if you know a neonatologist, they'll tell you. So they specialize in. They specialize in the unborn, early born child of which you are going to turn it. So if they're viable and they can be sustained and to um, term and then be released outside of the womb, why is the w inside the womb a uh, different than a womb with a view? That's right. And, and now we've got people like the governor of Virginia saying, well, you know what, even if the baby's outside the womb, well, let's just walk away and let it die. Let it, let it cry itself to death. Um, this, is, this is where the Democratic Party has gone. When they're lighting up a celebration of killing children till birth and, and Governor Cuomo in, in New York, by the way, that's another uh, celebration of hypocrisy. They actually lit the, the, the World Trade uh, Tower uh, uh, exhibit there. They lit it pink. Well, that's the same place where there's a memorial for the 11 unborn children who were killed by the terrorists in 9-11. Um, it's hypocrisy. It's absolute hypocrisy. And, and one of the chapters in my book is about how the enemy overplayed his hand. And I think that's what's happening right now. The enemy has overplayed his hand. When you have a, you have a guy at the top of the ticket who used to be for the Hyde Amendment, who has turned so far left, who's become the puppet of the Marxist Party, is now saying, well, yeah, we should, we should kill children, make you pro-life or pay for it. Forget about the right to choose. That's gone. Uh, we want to kill them until birth. And even after birth, they don't want any restrictions. Kamala Harris says any state that has a restriction, they'd have to run it by me first. Really? This is where we've come. And, and what we've got to do is wake up and realize we still have a chance. You know, I remember when, when uh, Obama was sworn in. I prayed a prayer, Rabbi. I don't tell too many people this, but I prayed. I said, God, if, if you give us another chance of mercy as a nation, if you give us freedom again, I promise you, I will use that chance. I will use that freedom. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's before the heartbeat bill was birthed, that we have an opportunity. God in his mercy gave us President Trump. We could have seen the Constitution shredded four years ago under, under a Hillary Clinton administration, but God said, no, I'm going to hear the cries of my people, and I'm going to answer them. And they came, they came out to the polls in record numbers. Well, well, God gave us mercy. The question is, are we going to keep it? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to let it go the way of the, let America become a, a, a part of the ash heap of history? Or do you want to rise up and use the freedoms we have to keep the freedoms we have and to, to, to keep the number one right that's spelled out in our birth, our birth uh, certificate and the Declaration of Independence? So we're endowed not by the state, not by the Biden administration or by the Supreme Court. We are endowed by our creator with the inalienable. That means you can't take it away. You can't legislate, you can't rule away. The inalienable right to life, and uh, it's the right on, on which every other right is based. And so this is our chance. And I'm going to tell you something. People say to me, you know, you, you've got all these states, you've got heartbeat bills, you've got them going up through the courts, they're going to deliver the fatal blow to the heart of Roe versus Wade. I'm just telling you this, and, and take note, that ending abortion 
is just the beginning. I have such hope because I can, I've can. seen what God can do through a remnant, through a handful of people that just won't give up, that are just persistent and have the faith that God put in them, that God is who he says he is, that he's able to do what he says he can do, that this 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 God of the impossible really is who he claims to be. And, and, and if you want to know whether you believe it or not, check and see what you're willing to do. And so I just say, actions are what you believe. Let's go out there. Let's register people. Let's spread it out until uh, until you get choked out of uh, Facebook and Twitter. Let's use it for for all it's worth. And I'm now on Parler so that people can can actually uh, uh, hear freedom and not 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 be uh, censored and blocked and and uh, prevented from hearing the truth. But but this is this is a a new day in America. We've got a chance to keep America. And I, for one, am going to do everything I can to do it to, to keep it. Amen. Wisdom and power. <clears throat> Faith without works is death. It's dead. This is the work that must be done. The book is entitled A Heartbeat Away, How the Heart Bre- Heartbeat Bill Will Pierce the Heart of Roe v. Wade and the Shocking Betrayal No One Saw Coming. Janet Porter, she is the Heartbeat Bill architect, and you can contact her at F2A, uh, the letter F, the number 2, a dot O-R-G, and she will help you get this legislation introduced into your state and to help you see this through uh, all the way till America gives the right back to the one who has no voice. Janet Porter, you are a modern day hero, a champion, and the history books will record you as one who took on a 47-year battle and came out victorious. You Glory are, be to God. You are the David taking on the Goliath, and we stand with you in prayer and support, and we encourage everyone to get this book, to read it, to share it with your Save-A-Life, with your women's uh, centers, Uh, with your legislators, your state house, with your state representatives, with your congressman, with your senator, to write them about the heartbeat bill. Send them a copy of this book. Make sure they get it and make sure you get it. Janet Porter, God bless you and all the works of your hands. Thank you for being with us. God bless you, my friend. I sure appreciate the, the opportunity to join you today. Thank you. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll bring you the next edition of Revealing the Truth.